friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm not going to talk about aging. Uh, the video on aging, the reality of aging has gone viral. I've received phone calls from all over the world, from Finland, from England, from South Africa. I've received messages from Botswana, Swaziland, the United States. I've received calls from within Nigeria. Thank you guys for sharing it to your WhatsApp group and your family groups, your class, uh, classmates, your school groups. I'm very excited that one is able to make a meaning in the lives of people. For some weeks before now, I had been praying that I want to deliver a message, I want to write a book, I want to do a video that will be a legacy that will affect lives. I'm so glad that that video made an impact. There's a second one that is supposed to come out about the reality of the male aging and sex. Uh, there are sexual problems and needs of men who are aging that a lot of our wives and our, our wives don't understand. But the video one will come up. Uh, I want to talk about something else this evening. This is the this is how far we've gone with uh, Petra Institute. The first block, we, we just did the casting of the lintel round. We just finished that today, and we have been using the principle of gradualism. The remaining part is, uh, we're gonna do the pillars, and then do the beams. Uh, God helping me, I will get money to buy rods, to buy plank, planks, cement, and to do that. I want to thank all those who have contributed towards uh, making this project um, a reality. I want to thank somebody, particularly in the United States. He sent a million naira at one time when I was having challenges in filling this place because we bought 165 trips of sand. Uh, I want to thank some people. They sent 100,000, sent various forms, sums of money to help me execute this project. It's a project that belongs to all of us. It's a project that um, generations after me will enjoy. Uh, the last video, some people were thinking that I was angry with life or angry with my family, or angry with my children. No, I am a fulfilled man. I'm a very happy man. Very, very happy man. I found out very early in life that happiness is a native of my mind. Anything outside, it's not compulsory, it makes, makes me happy. I decide to be happy inside. My children, my wife, they know. I've told them severally that if they say I'm not their father, I'm not their, I'm not the husband of my wife, that I should leave the house, I'll just take my certificates and walk away. And in the next 10 years, I'll be richer than what I am. I'll be happier than who I am today. I have tied my happiness to myself and to Jehovah. My happiness and my joy is not based on what happens around me. It's my reaction towards what happens around me. So this, I want to talk to you about allotropy. Allotropy is the existence of an element in different forms in the same state. If you take carbon C, for example, it is the same carbon that is in charcoal. Charcoal can ignite fire, but charcoal cannot conduct electricity. But there is also graphite C. Graphite is in the battery. Graphite can conduct electricity. Graphite is a lubricant because the arrangement of the carbon um, elements is such that they are flat, they can slide over each other. But graph uh, C, carbon, is also in diamond. And because of the tetrahedral arrangement of the carbon molecules in the, in the structure of diamond, it makes it one of the hardest um, substances ever known. And because of the nature of diamond, if um, light passes through it, it disperses light, separates the light to its various colors of red, orange, white, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And so, I want to talk about allotropy as it relates to the human being. I have had a wonderful life because I have existed in various forms. I started as a very shy human being, 
very shy young man with a lot of inferiority complex. My peer, my mother described me variously that I had a big head. She didn't know it was it contained a lot of gigabytes of memory and knowledge. I don't have headaches like other people because I have enough space to contain information and to reason and to bring out ideas. Most of what I'm sharing with you, and I never studied them in Bible school, never went to Bible school. They are information that the Holy Spirit has taught me, have synthesized from meditation and reflection. Oh, she described me as the ugliest child of her, uh, our, that I was the ugliest child she had. But today, I'm the most popular. Check me out, baby. All over the world, people watch me. Uh, women want to take selfies with me. People want to take selfies with me. People want to take pictures with me. Uh, so I have left that stage, that elemental stage, where people wanted to put inferiority complex in me. Number two, my, the kind of background I came from. My father was a refuse collector. I lived in a mud house. We went to toilet in the bush. We, we had a bathroom that heaven and earth was bearing witness. When you were taking your bath, chickens were sleeping under my bed. I didn't have a coat for matriculation. I had to borrow. Uh, I, the shoes I wore for matriculation were not my own. I couldn't go for graduation, convocation, because I didn't have transport money. And a lot of complexes. When I got married to my wife, uh, we slept on the floor. We used her wrapper as cotton. Then I moved her with her to Abba. We got home with two Naira 50 Kobo, where she was sleeping on the sixth spring bed. I would sleep on the floor. That was at the level of poverty and lack. But we've since left that level. <laughs> Glory to God, we've since left that level. And I believe too, you might be listening to me, you're at a certain level in life. You will leave that level. It's the same you, but you have left that level. Let me, let me just show you something I have used to teach before. Now, this is um, a thousand naira note. If I squeeze this one thousand naira note, it remains one thousand naira. If I step on it, it remains one thousand naira note. If I use it to clean my sweat, it remains one thousand naira note. If I spit on it, it remains one thousand naira note. That's the value God has for you. The potential and the value God has for you is constant. You can improve on it, however. If I take this 1,000 Naira note and I use it to buy something and I sell and make a profit of 200 Naira, the latent value has come out. The potential 200 Naira inside I have increased it. Even if I change it to 50-50 uh, Naira notes or 20-20 uh, uh, Naira notes and I get 1,000 Naira, I can sell it for 1,100 for those who want to spray money in a party. So you are like this note. Don't feel depressed. Don't feel angry with life. Don't look at the state in which you are. That Naira note can be stained with blood, stained with oil. As long as the number does not cut off, it remains 1,000 Naira note. So have value for yourself. You are a human being. You are a progressive manifestation and exudation and reflection of the nature of God. Don't let any person give you a permanent value. One of the things you must not allow is to allow certification become the circumference of your life. Is to allow certification to become a prison. Certification only shows that you have acquired knowledge to think arbitrary thoughts partially and be able to synchronize ideas and arrive at reasonable conclusions. So I was first a teacher at the College of Commerce in Worry. I was a teacher, but a medical doctor was incubating in me. So I became a medical doctor. I was 25 when I became a medical doctor. At 27, I was running a 40-bed hospital uh, at Abba as a private medical practitioner. At 29, I opened my own practice, and I practiced for 15 years or thereabout. And um, I told myself I was not going to practice medicine beyond the age of 40. At 40, I sold the hospital. I had always segmented my life in such a way that I can change form 
in the same state and metamorphose. So be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. I am able to walk away from each stage in life and metamorphose into another person. I was a deacon, Sunday school teacher, Sunday school superintendent, men's fellowship leader at ABA. But I got to a stage with general medical practice. I discovered that I was not having fulfillment. It was not the best that I had wanted for my life. I had always wanted to influence this world. I had always wanted to be a global citizen. I've always had wanted to have a global family. That's why I trained my children, sent them overseas. When they were in Europe, I sent them to Massachusetts to go and work so that they can have global exposure. And um, I wanted them to marry from all over the world so that I can, their poking name can be a brand all over. And it's happening. So I have fulfillment. But I was at about this stage and I was tired of the status quo. I was tired of what I was doing. I was tired of those I was living with there. I was tired of the kind of ministry I was running. I was tired of the value that was attached to me. One day, I was going somewhere with my dear friend, Elder, a.k.a. Eliaya Onuma, and I saw this kind of white sand across the expressway in Aba, across the express, the Portacourt Express Road. And I remembered my dreams. I remembered my dreams of being a global citizen. I remembered my dreams of influencing the world. But I was here in Aba for 15 years. I had been in one place. And I told Elder A.K. Leanya Onuma. That time, he was driving a 505. Is it evolution or revolution? I told him, Brother A.K., I'm going to go home. He said, where are you going home to? I told him, I want to renew my life. I want to redefine my life. The dreams I had came flooding back. The dreams of being a global citizen. I had remained in church. I had remained in one place. I had gotten stagnated. Could you be in that position listening to me? You've been in one place for years. You've been doing the same thing with the same people, the same way, and you're expecting a different result. Is it Einstein that said, doing the same thing with the same people in the same place and expecting a different result is insanity? I think it's Einstein, even though a lot of people say it's Socrates. I, I think it's Einstein. So I decided I was leaving a bar, and moreover, the deadline I set for practicing medicine had expired. I never wanted to be a professor of medicine. I never wanted to be a consultant. I wanted my son to be that. Thank God he is that already. And thank God my second son, the one that shares this blog, this post, the administrator of this um, net, this uh, channel, is married to a cardiologist. So I had to leave medical practice, come to Ugeli. So I came to Ugeli as a pastor, I came to Ugeli, I was running a church, I was having members, but I looked at these members. If I continued with them, I will not fulfill my dream. I will not actualize my dream. One day, I told them, I'm going to give, uh, this church is going to stop. Don't come here again. And they still came. And I told them, I was going to uh, do something to let you know why people invite me. And I preached to them, and the power of God came down. They were all on the floor. And uh, after that, I told them, I'm not going to pastor you again. And I called the Church of God mission. They took me and the members over. Today, I'm an auxiliary usher in that same church. I don't sit in the altar. I was tired of that, being at that level. So, allotropy had taken place, and I metamorphosed to another kind of person. I started ministry with power move. Take it there. Boom. Bam, people will fall. Uh, I will preach. The interpreter will hold the microphone and fall down. If you pick the microphone, you will fall down. One day I preached at um, Christian Pentecostal Mission at um, Council Road, inside the uh, Ungwa Road. I finished preaching. The interpreter fell down. The anointing came. The, somebody had picked the microphone, fell down. It was, they were not being electrocuted. It was just the grace of God manifesting, the dogza of God. And as I was going, about six to ten people gathered me. I said, somebody help me. All of them fell down. And my eldest son was with me. As we got to the hotel, I asked him, do you want a dose of this stuff? He said, yes. And I threw the shirt I was wearing. It was a white shirt. And he slept off. 
So that was 11. But I saw that charlatans, all kinds of people were doing anointing, doing word of knowledge. I could describe the hall of the full gospel businessmen's fellowship meeting. Two weeks before I would go there, I would tell my children, this person will be sitting down here. He will be wearing this kind of dress. God said this is happening and it will come to pass. I could describe people and the boxers they were wearing. I could describe things. God will reveal them to me. I could describe the color of dresses people will wear before I left Aba to Umwaya to go and speak or to Okigwe. But you see, I discovered that Chalantans came in, were doing all kinds of stuff. So I left that. My friend, uh, Ion uh, Lugo, and uh, a host of them, they used to call me electrocution there. Then, because the power of God will come down, people will be electrified, they will fall under anointing, and then they were calling me electrocution. So I left that level. I discovered that I needed to go to the intellectual level, what I call developmental Christianity, where I can affect the minds of people, transform people. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. I wanted a situation where I could influence people by re-educating and reorienting their, life, their, their minds. So we went into this teaching ministry, we went into this kind of ministry of building people up. I had metamorphosed. From then, I went to become a school proprietor. So I started running school, opening schools, running the school. But it got to a stage, I got tired of that level of the manifestation of my life. And I told my wife I was not going to come to the office. So I left that. I came to become a farmer. OK, I wrote books. I became an author, wrote several books. I think I wrote about 40 books within, within a space of time. I got bored. I get easily tired of staying at the same level over a period of time. The only thing I'm not bored of is getting married to my wife. Marriage is like pepper soup that you cook for yourself. When you cook it, it's peppery. Drink it, it's your pepper soup. It is hot, drink water, it's your pepper soup. You sneeze, clean your nose, it's your pepper soup. If you meet bone, leave the bone and eat the flesh. Every marriage has bone. Forget all these ones we hold our wives on Facebook. My honey, my meaty, why are you the inside? Every person is acting. There was a day I posed with my wife on a New Year Day. People were saying, wonderful couple. This, they didn't know we quarreled because of, is it 200 naira? before we took that picture. On her 60th birthday, we quarreled in the morning. I'm the only pastor that quarrels with his wife. You'll be surprised to see me in heaven. All of you are spirits. I'm the only one that quarrels with his wife. One day, uh, on my wife's 60th birthday, before the, the, the ceremony, she quarreled with me. Ah, rah, rah. Me, I kept quiet. Then finally, she said we should come and take pictures. I went and embraced her, and she whispered to me, People no go no say we just quarrel before we take this picture. So don't kill yourself because of another person's marriage. Don't think that somebody is enjoying life more than you. So I got tired of the school at a point and I left. And I came here, I started farming. Um, COVID made me to farm. And I've been farming, farming, and then we started building this school. This school, like as I to, I've told people, is going to be a tertiary institution we're going to study early child education because I have a school and then people would uh, learn how to take care of children, certify them, so that when they finish school, they can open their own nursery school, daycare centers. We're going to do uh, hotel and catering management. We're going to do fashion and designing. We're going to do international, I mean, um, IT and then agriculture. And I'm enjoying myself. Staying, yeah. So I have lived various forms of lives. In the same state, I've imported cars, I've sold cars, I've sold fish meal, and for everything I do, I put in my best and I derive maximum pleasure from it. So I came here, I farmed, we are building this tertiary institution, uh, then I went into real estate. I've been doing real estate, selling real estate, I don't know what is next, but really, I want to influence the world. I want to leave a mark. I want to leave a memory. I want to leave money behind for my children, behind for the generations yet unborn. Money in such a way that even if I'm no longer alive, resources are being generated like the Rockefeller Foundation, 
Like the Sabanchi Foundation in Turkey. The Sabanchi Foundation has scholarship for about 27,000 Turkish students. Sabanchi Foundation pays 5% of the annual tax of Turkey. I want to be like the lady Fatima that built Al Quarin University in Fez, Morocco, with the inheritance she got from her father, a Muslim woman. Al Quarin University in Fez, Morocco, is the oldest continuous degree awarding university in the world, built by a Muslim lady. I want to leave a memory, I want to generate momentum for others, that when people meet me, listen to the words I have said. These videos are going to outlive me, they are going to be there. They are going to be like Shakespeare's books. People are going to read them, watch them. They will remain eternal. Eternal life is not escaping to heaven. That's the mistake the black man has. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's not the urgency. It is the proximity, the accessibility, the availability, the ability to relate with God because God with us, Emmanuel, that's Jesus Christ. I want to be able to generate momentum for others. They will stand on the level one has reached, the knowledge one has known and given to them because the, the, the principle behind this ministry is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. What you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who are able to teach others. Years to come, 50 years to come, 30 years to come, people will still be referring to the statements I have made just as I have been quoting others. I want to be able to do that. Then I want to be able to leave a legacy in such a way that I will place the black man on the map of excellence. People will know that a Nigerian once lived that was different from the pervading circumstances then. A man that could live according to the principles he has taught. Somebody came from the UK today to visit me and I received phone calls from all over the world in this rural community. You remember my post on thriving in the suburban economy. So this place is going to be a tourist center. We will have accommodation. People will come. All those of you who have been calling me, you will come to Nigeria one day to stay here. We will play. We will share. We will have master classes. I thank you so much for your contribution towards this building. I still look forward to more of your contributions so that this big dream can become a reality, so that we can metamorphose to the next level. The next level, I believe God for, as I had planned in old age, if my wife is going for Mugo, which I don't know she will do, my wife hardly travels. Somebody gave us free tickets to come to the United States. He, she said that she will not go unless they will carry her school inside the plane. So my wife hardly travels on her, on her 50th birthday. We asked my last born, what do we give to your mother for her 50th birthday? He said that we should give her sleeping medicine so that she can sleep, that we should sedate her because she loves her work, she loves her businesses. In fact, she's the engine room of nearly everything we've done. This is the very first time I'm doing something, a building on my own without her input. I just wanted to assert myself. So hopefully, well, if she travels for Mogo, me, I will be traveling, man. I have all of you all over the world. I'll go to Finland, I'll go to Zimbabwe, I'll go to Botswana, I'll go to Trinidad and Tobago. Somebody sent me a message from Guyana. I'll go to Guyana, go and look at where Jim Jones had his camp. I will go to, there's a country, I want to go to Suriname, I want to visit several countries, uh, the Tox and the Caicos, all those islands. I like islands. So I will travel, I will spend old age traveling, visiting places, sharing the wisdom God has given to me, uh, relating with young people, and raising that one million entrepreneurs I want to raise. The next level, God knows it. He will bring the resources, he will bring the people, he will bring the ideas. What I am doing now, I had the concept years back, but I never knew it would metamorphose this quickly. So God, my life is in his hands. But I want to encourage somebody, don't live a life and be imprisoned in one place. Don't let your profession become a prison. I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer. Even if you're not getting fulfillment, you're not progressing, you're still stuck there. No, there is more in you, you can become something else. Cyprian Equency was a pharmacist and he became an author. So metamorphose, life will be so boring and unproductive if we stay put in one place because that's our career, that's our job. 
Uh, for me, the last time I was employed was when I was 28 years transiting to 29. The last time I did a job for somebody, I earned salary, was February 28. 1988 i was just heading towards 29 since then i have never worked for any person i have lived my life i have lived my life expressed myself made the best of the circumstances around me determined where i will be what i will be doing when i what i will end god has helped me i wish you the same i pray that you have a full life a life that is not tied to another person's happiness don't ever let your life be tied to somebody's budget, somebody's brain, somebody's body, somebody's blessing. Let your life be based on the expression of the divinity that is in you. Because you are limitless. The Bible says, he who is born again is like the wind. You can't limit the wind. They will see your movement, see your motion. As I was doing this video, somebody stopped by and was thanking me for the impact these videos are making in the lives of people. I wish you a very fulfilling life. I wish you, that, I wish that you undergo progressive metamorphosis. The butterfly starts as an egg, becomes a larva, caterpillar, turns to a pupa, from pupa becomes a, butterf becomes a butterfly. Colors, means of mobility changes, uh, the diet changes. So, I want to pray for you particularly listening to me. Don't feel depressed. Don't feel that it is over with you. There were times I felt like that. There were times I felt bad. I remember one day in church, I sat down. I was thinking of the places I was supposed to be in life, where I wanted to be, what I was supposed to be, the content of my mind that was not having expression. And one Deacon Gracious Uneze became Elder Gracious Uneze of the Church of God Mission 39, Umuola Road. He was the choir master and he sang a song. You are destined to win. You're surrounded by his love, guided by his power. You are destined to win. I sat down. I was weeping. No person understood. But that song has come to pass. I'm a winner. I'm getting the fullness of life. I'm manifesting myself to the fullness of his glory. The Bible says he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. The church has concentrated on the spot, the stain. They have forgotten the wrinkle. Wrinkle is reduced dimension. God is coming for a glorious church, a church that is well stretched out, maximized potential. Somebody was telling me that 80% of the health workers in Germany are employed by religious organizations, the Catholic Church, Caritas, and one other thing. 60% of the bed spaces in Germany are owned by religious organizations. What are we doing in Africa? What kind of religion are we practicing in Africa? What kind of Islam are we practicing in Africa? Of shooting people, of beheading people, of cutting people's hands? What kind of Christianity are we practicing in Africa? We must manifest God, express God. God bless you, I remain your friend, Dr. Charles uh, Pocky.